It goes without saying that the crypto markets have seen an absolutely rough year. Prices are at multi-year lows. Sentiment is completely in the gutter. But despite all this, the underlying decentralized technology is forcefully advancing. We've seen major social media giants like Twitter and Reddit eyeing Web 3.0 solutions. And now another major player, Instagram, has come onto the scene to integrate Web 3.0 into its platform. So this is a big deal. And today I'm going to tell you everything that you need to know as a blockchain developer myself who works this technology on a daily basis, who's been in this space for a very long time and watch all these trends emerge from the ground up. So if you're new around here, Hey, I'm Gregory, and on this channel, I turn you into a blockchain master. So if that's something you're interested in, then smash that like button down below for the YouTube algorithm and subscribe to this channel. And if you learn how to become a blockchain master step-by-step -step start to finish, then head on over to dappuniversity.com forward slash bootcamp to get started today. All right, so let's get into this. Let's talk about how Instagram is getting into Web 3.0, why this is such a big deal, exactly what they're doing, and how this can lay the foundations for a much larger trend of Web 3.0 social media that could be coming very soon. So earlier this month, Meta, the parent company of Instagram, just announced their partnership with Arweave to start letting people buy and sell NFTs inside of the Instagram application, in addition to their other NFT features that they've currently enabled into their platform. So I'm going to break that down, show you why it's important and how it could lay the foundations for something much bigger down the road. So let's start off with NFTs. So of course, NFTs have made a major wave over the past year or so. It's opened up a ton of new blockchain-based use cases like creators connecting with fans, value accruing back to a community, and social tokens as incentives for community members inside of that. This has primarily come in the form of, you know, digital collectibles with NFTs, but we're just scratching the surface for what we can do with NFTs. Pretty much anything that can be modeled with value can be done that is non-fungible with NFTs like intellectual property rights, physical real estate, and so much more. And throughout this boom, we saw major NFT marketplaces like OpenSea generate over $20 billion of revenue in 2021. And as a result of the numerous NFT projects that have flooded onto the scene over the past two years, we've also seen a lot of new NFT marketplaces hit the scene in order to capture some of this market share. And Instagram is another person who's tapping their name into the hat. And so why is this a big deal? Well, first of all, you know, Instagram, it goes without saying, is one of the biggest social media platforms out there. It's got 2 billion active users. Okay, just to give you a comparison, you know, Facebook has close to 3 billion. It's the largest, all right? And something like Twitter, which, you know, many people who are interested in crypto are on Twitter, it, by comparison, it only has, you know, about 400 million active users. So it's an order of magnitude larger, and they have some real momentum that could cause this to tip the scale in favor of Web 3.0 social media. And we've also seen a recent development from Apple that's actually come out with official policy allowing people to sell NFTs inside of their iOS applications, okay, as long as they get a cut. That's the catch they're talking about here. But this is a big development that helps lay the foundations for what's to come with Instagram. All right, so what exactly is Facebook doing with NFTs with Web 3.0 into its platform? What has been this recent development that could help, you know, push this space forward? Well, earlier this year, you know, Instagram announced that they were actually going to let you integrate NFTs directly into the application and verify that you own NFTs. So we kind of saw this trend happen early this year organically on Twitter where people would, you know, purchase NFTs and make them their profile picture. And maybe they would include an ether scan link with their wallet that proves that they actually own that NFT with some sort of digital signature. And then other social media companies realized this trend and how valuable this was. And they started doing things like, you know, verifying that you do have the ownership of that directly inside the application. So Twitter did that initially. And we saw Instagram support that you could actually, you know, connect your digital wallet to it, sign a message, verify that you own that, and then have lots of other features like tipping inside the application, sending funds from one account to another, et cetera, et cetera. So that was initially early this year, but the recent development with Instagram is that they're launching the ability for creators, okay, Instagram creators, to actually launch NFTs directly inside the application, all right, with a few clicks of a button, and then also um, essentially sell them to their audience right inside of Instagram. And so that's how it kind of evolves in this NFT marketplace experience that's you know, similar to OpenSea does, but different. It taps directly into their audience of, you know, these 2 billion active users that we we're talking about a minute ago. And this builds on the trend of the creator economy, which is, you know, estimated to be over a $100 billion industry, okay? And Instagram is building new tools to help, you know, fuel this creator economy and actually give value to the people that are inside these audiences with NFTs. And that's really what's so important about this entire thing is the actual incentive to adopt the technology. I want to repeat that. The incentive is king here because so many times Web 3.0 and blockchain technology is criticized as a solution in terms of a problem. There's no actual use case. It's all hype. But what we're actually seeing here is that NFTs took the world by storm over the past couple of years, despite the market being down right now. 
You have a major giant like Instagram seeing this opportunity to graph this into what's going on with the creator economy to capture a slice of this. There's real massive revenue potential here. That's an indication of actual underlying value and an incentive to actually adopt this technology, push this space forward. And I really think it's just the beginning of a bigger snowball that can happen, which I'll talk about here in a minute. All right, so now let's talk about the details of how they're actually implementing this from a technical perspective, because a lot of people want to know where the technologies are involved. How does it work? Why are they doing these partnerships? So like I was saying before, they recently announced their partnership with Arweave, okay, which is a decentralized file storage protocol uh, that's going to make this possible. So what is Arweave? How does it work? Well, let's first talk about the problem that it solves, okay? So when you look at NFTs, all right, these digital collectibles or whatever it is, whether it's ownership of real estate, et cetera, et cetera, again, these are just tokens and the tokens are stored on a blockchain. The, the tokens are responsible for who owns the NFTs. They can transfer them between accounts with smart contracts on the blockchain itself. But the real catch with this is the pictures or any type of media, like a, a video, whatever, that's associated with the NFT. You can't really put that on a blockchain because it's too computationally expensive. Like if you had a blockchain like Ethereum, for example, you're not going to put a picture on the Ethereum blockchain. It's, it's just not going to work. OK, so that's where you need a decentralized file storage protocol. OK, so basically a, an NFT looks like this. Yeah, the collection, which is governed by a smart contract, it, you know, governs who has the wallets and how they can transfer NFTs between different people, buy and sell them. And then you have the images that live somewhere else, and then you store a reference to that image inside the smart contract. And so this right here, I know this is IPF, that's my screen, that's from a diagram from a different video, but that's where Arweave comes into play. So Arweave is a decentralized file storage protocol. Okay, so how does it work? So it works kind of like a blockchain, but not really. Let me explain. So Arweave is a decentralized file storage protocol where essentially you pay to store files, you just pay once and it's there forever. So that's what's really important is the data is permanent. Okay, once it's on the protocol, it's not going to go away and everybody can see it. Okay, it can't change. That's what's really important. And you have that transparency and complete auditability. So that's what it does. And it works kind of like a blockchain in that it has its own token. Okay, the Arweave token. And it has a set of nodes that all talk to one another that facilitate the process of storing the files, you know, processing the transaction fees and those, you know, incentives go back to people who run the nodes who get paid in order to run this network as well. So it does work kind of like a blockchain this way, but it's it's slightly different, okay? So whereas many blockchains like Ethereum or Bitcoin have, you know, essentially are just like bundles of records that get chained together cryptographically to make a linear chain of blocks to make up the blockchain, Arweave is a little bit different because it stores the data in like this graph of blocks that's unique to how it works for its own specific use case. And instead of having, you know, like proof of work like Bitcoin has or proof of stake like Ethereum has now, it has its own proprietary proof of access consensus model. And then again, just like those are blockchains, like I was saying before, it has its own token the Arweave token that lets you pay to store files and incentivizes the people who run the network, much like Bitcoin. You know, anytime you, you transfer Bitcoin from one account to another, you, know, you pay a transaction fee and then new Bitcoins created by the blockchain you know, to incentivize the nodes to do that. And similarly with Ether right now, it's on proof of stake. OK, you pay a transaction fee. Of course, part of that gets burnt and erased from the network. But part of that goes to the validators and then also the blockchain itself creates uh, you know, Ether to those people. And that's basically how Arweave works with the Arweave token as well. All right, so that's how Instagram is using blockchain and Web 3.0 and its new set of NFT features uh, with Arweave. Okay, that's an explanation of what they're doing, how it works. But now let's talk about how this really could be the beginning of a much larger trend. Okay, I want to kind of connect the dots here so you can see where this space can head. So again, Web 3.0 social media is really in its infancy and has a lot of growth potential. And we see a lot of different trends converging all into one. So I'll kind of break those down right now. So recently we've seen, you know, Elon Musk, you know, acquire Twitter privately and start to make a lot of changes at the company. OK, so, you know, earlier before this acquisition, Elon was talking about, you know, hey, should we make the Twitter uh, algorithm open source? So that's a Web 3.0 value. That's not directly using blockchain itself, but that's a move in the direction of Web 3.0 of you know, transparency so that other people can audit how it works, so that you're not shadow banned. We don't see that, you know, somebody's behind the scenes pulling levers to, you know, make certain things uh, more popular and suppress certain ideas. That's been a big contentious thing with social media, particularly around like political elections and things like that. OK, we saw text messages that were used in courts where Elon's own words saying he had an idea for a blockchain based social media system that does both payments and short messages like Twitter, where you have to pay a tiny amount to register your message on the chain to help reduce spam bots. Because anybody who's been on Twitter has seen that bots have been an absolute problem. And that's one way you could potentially prevent the spam. And I've even made videos on this channel talking about how NFTs and actually having an NFT as your actual verification badge on your social media account can prove that you're a human and be another solution to 
preventing, uh, you know, spam or multiple identities online. I mean, this has got use cases beyond just social media. Think about like concert tickets or bots go out and buy up the entire thing. What if you had an NFT that essentially proved that you were a unique human and could fairly participate in something like this? Social media is just one application. But I digress. Anyways, those are people outside the crypto space, major players who are eyeing with 3.0 into their platform. Uh, from within the crypto space, we've even seen uh, major, you know, figureheads like Vitalik Buterin, you know, the mastermind behind Ethereum itself. Uh, last year at ETHCC talking about, hey, we should really start looking into Web 3.0 social media as one of the next big use cases beyond just DeFi and how, you know, the fact that we're on the cusp of scaling blockchains to the scale they need for mass adoption, that that scalability could actually enable use cases like Web 3.0 social media and that we should start focusing on this. And we have seen efforts like this within the space. We have the Lens Protocol, okay, which is a pretty popular and fast growing social media protocol that can power multiple social media applications from the same place. Basically, you just have a central protocol that governs how you can create social media, and then you can mix and match that with other uh, you know, applications that are powered by this protocol on the back end. You can do things like transfer your social graph from one app to another. So if people will follow you on Twitter and you automatically go over to uh, you know, Instagram, for example, you can move those followers over you know, without having to change anything. Because, you know, when you're using Web 3.0, using the blockchain, you're a user of the entire network, not just each siloed application itself. And so when you start to see all these different ways that you can improve social media like this, like social graphs, like proving that you are actually a human, a unique human and don't have like five different accounts, how you can dramatically cut down on spam bots with paying a small fee and restore information for the long term how you can do things like open source algorithms to prove that certain ideas aren't being promoted or suppressed. These are all ways you can clearly improve social media as it is today. Earlier I was talking about incentives. These are the incentives to adopt and push the space forward. And all the major players are moving in this direction, okay? And also to monetize, create the economy like I was talking about before Instagram. So Twitter, Instagram, Reddit, all outsiders getting on this technology, insiders from within, realizing that this is the next thing, building the tools, and this is all you know, just the, the groundwork for a snowball to just get rolling and get bigger and bigger and bigger. And once it starts really rolling fast, it's going to be hard to stop. All right. So that's an overview of Web 3.0 social media, how Instagram's getting onto the scene and how this can be part of the foundation for a much larger trend that's going to come. So I hope you like this video. You know, as always, smash that like button down below for the YouTube algorithm. Subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. And if you're just like, you know, your mind is blown with everything that I said today. Again, this stuff blows my mind every time I see like this happen and you're just fast at the technology as I am, you want to get your hands dirty, break into the industry, how can you do that and land your first job, you know, soon? We can go to my YouTube homepage. You can find my free courses there, I like Udemy courses, but they're totally free. And if you'd like those, or hey, maybe you just want to pause the video right now and go for the throat, I can show you to master blockchain step by step from start to finish over at dappuniversity.com forward slash bootcamp, okay? You have to be an expert to get started today. With all people with zero coding experience become real world blockchain developers in a matter of months. So that's all I've got. Until next time, thanks for watching Dappy Diversity.